Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, I'm very glad to have with us Dr. Fa Namnithapan. Fa got her bachelor's degree in chemistry from Carleton College in Minnesota. She subsequently came to Caltech to work in the Stoltz Group, where she's worked on nickel-catalyzed asymmetric allele calculations, the total synthesis of joramycin and gerunamycin A, and other topics in addition to the work she'll be sharing with us today. Currently, she works as a research scientist at the Chuaborn Research Institute in Bangkok. And with that, I'll let you get started, Fa. Thanks for joining us today to talk about your work. Thank you, Matt, for the introduction and for the invitation to have me here today. It's my pleasure to share with you part of my PhD work that was performed in the Sloss Lab at Caltech, and that's the enantioselective selective synthesis of ibernamonine, leucopholine, and 16 prime epi leucopholidine. Before I talk about the chemistry, I would like to first acknowledge these people whose names are listed at the bottom of this slide. None of the work that I'm about to present here today would be possible without their contribution, especially Dr. Chris Ryman here, who was spearheading this research for many years. And so our natural product target, leucophilidine, it is a heterodimeric bisindole alkaloid that was first isolated from the bark of the Malaysian woody clumber in 2009. This natural product is a union of two monomeric fragments, namely ibramine, which is the indole-containing portion highlighted in blue, and eucophiline, which is the quinoline-containing fragment highlighted in brown. Structurally, the molecule contains nine ring and four stereogenic centers, in which two of those are all carbon quaternary stereocenters. Apart from the complex structure, leucophilidine also exhibits biological activities such as the in vitro cytotoxicity toward drug-resistant human KB cells and inhibitor of nitrous oxide synthase. Prior to our report on the synthesis of leucophilidine, Pande and co-workers have attempted to complete the molecule through a biomimetic approach, and the proposed biosynthesis is reported to be the enzyme-mediate phytocrops alkylation. Unfortunately, when they try to subject the two monomers to aqueous hydrochloric acid to promote the phytocrops alkylation, they only observe isoleucophilidine, whose structure is shown on the bottom right of this slide. Several other conditions have been attempted, but none proved successful. They finally conclude that the C8 position of the quinoline, which is highlighted with the brown sphere, is much more nucleophilic compared to the C6 position and they attributed this to the greater stabilization of the VLAN intermediate when substitution occurs at the C8 position. Given the synthetic challenge observed by Pande and co-workers in the biomimetic approach, we plan to instead exploit cross-coupling reaction to merge ibernamonine and eucophilidine. Overall, our retrosynthetic route employs a convergent divergent strategy where we envision utilizing the cross-coupling to convergently force the two fragments. And both fragments can be synthesized in a divergent fashion from the same quaternary lactam building block. Finally, we envision that this lactam can be prepared via the palladium catalyzed enantioselective decarboxylative allylic alkylation developed in the Stoltz group. In the forward sense, we successfully prepare more than 10 grams of the enantiol enriched quaternary lactam building block. Starting from the commercially available delta lactam, we first protected the lactam with the benzoyl group, followed by isolation and alkylation to provide the allylic alkylation study material. We were pleased to find that the low catalyst loading conditions, employing only one mole percent of the palladium to acetate, successfully afforded the benzoyl protected lactam in 91% yield and with 92% EE. Last, benzoyl cleavage completed a five step sequence affording the desired lactam in an enantial selective fashion. Now with the building block in hand, we elected to first focus our attention on the synthesis of ibernamonine, which represents the eastern fragment of our target molecule. Electrosynthetically, we plan to first adapt the chemistry reported by Schlesinger and co-workers, in which the ibernamonine was accessed through the hydrogenation and lactamization of the iminium intermediate. This tetracyclic iminium species can be constructed via bischer napierowski cyclization, at last, we envision installing the pendant in dough through an end alkylation of the quaternary lactam previously prepared. Unfortunately, we were disappointed to find that the end alkylations with tryptophore derived electrophiles failed to deliver the desired product. As a result, we elected to incorporate the in dough portion via the Fisher in dough synthesis, and this can be done through first performing the end alkylation to access the dioxalane intermediate. 
Subsequent oxidative cleavage of the alkene afforded the carboxylic acid. At last, the resulting aldehyde generated from the deprotection undergoes a fissure in the lysation with concomitant esterification to provide a methyl ester lactamp in 53% urine. The final steps to complete the synthesis of ibernamonine consists of bischer napierowski reaction, hydrogenation, and lactamization. We were pleased to find that by subjecting the intermediate to phosphoryl chloride in acetyl nitrile, the cyclization proceeds smoothly to afford the aminium perchlorate in 95% yield. And although we originally had some difficulties with the aminium reduction of this intermediate, we found that the choice of solvent is critical in this case. By using DMF instead of methanol as a solvent, improvement of diester selectivity was observed, providing 3.4 to 1 mixture of cis and trans products. At last, subsequent addition of DBU can be performed in the same pot to afford ibernamonine and epi ibernamonine natural products in 78% yield. Of note, the two isomers can be separated via routine flash column chromatography. Just to give you a brief recap at this point, we have completed the total synthesis of ibernamonine from the carolactam building block, which can be prepared in five steps from commercially available material. We first perform n alkylation oxidative cleavage, and fissure endosynthesis to access the functionalized lactam required for the bischer napierowski cyclization reaction. With that in hand, the cyclization was performed, followed by the iminium reduction with in situ lactamization, concluding our 10 step enantial selective total synthesis of ibernamonine. To date, this route represents the shortest asymmetric synthesis of this natural product. Now we turn our attention to the western fragment of the molecule, which is the quinoline containing natural product called eucophiline. To facilitate the late state conversion cross coupling, we elected brominate eucophiline as our target, as we envision utilizing this bromine atom as a functional handle to forge the carbon-carbon bond. Electrosynthetically, we plan to exploit sequential CH functionalization to install substituents at the C2 and C4 position of the quinoline. This would bring us back to the first quinoline intermediate, which we can access from the functionalized pipiridine and aniline via the freehander approach. Finally, the quaternary pipiridine can be prepared from the same lactam building block used in the synthesis of ibernamonine. In the forward sense, with respect to the preparation of the functionalized pipiridine, the unprotected lactam was reduced to the pipiridine using LAH reduction. Block protection of the free amine followed by aldehyde selective blocker oxidation afforded the desired pipiridine in just three steps. Regarding the aniline fragment, this was also performed in three steps, including the bromination with NBS, the alkylation followed by reduction to daily amino alcohol. With the two fragments in this size, we subjected both to the slightly modified conditions of what reported by Verpool and co-workers to produce a quinoline. Mechanistically, this reaction first proceeds with the condensation to generate the imine intermediate. Then the Woodward open hour oxidation follows to provide the aldehyde. At this point, terbutoxide abstracts an alpha proton of the imine and triggers the intramolecular outdoor condensation to afford the desired quinoline product. Recalling the retrosynthetic slide, we next plan to perform two sequential CH functionalizations on the quinoline, one at the C2 position and the other at the C4. In order to selectively functionalize at the C2 position, we found that the conditions developed by Landrigan's for an oxide direct amination work well. And so we first oxidize the quinoline to the quinoline and oxide using sharpless reported conditions. The bulk protecting group was then removed using tinted flate. And in the same part, by adding pyrob as an inoxide activator, the intramolecular amination provided the desired C2 aminated quinoline in 57% yield. Interestingly, when we performed the order of addition studies for this direct amination reaction, we found that the C2 aminated product was also formed even before pyrob was added to the pot. In this case, we believe that the tin reagent we used to remove the bulk group also serve as an inoxide activating agent to promote functionalization of quinoline inoxide at the C2 position. Next, for the functionalization at C4, we elected to investigate the Minishki reaction. By utilizing the photoredox mediate conditions, we successfully installed hydroxymethyl substituent in 77% yield. Interestingly, during our optimization, where we performed control experiments, we were surprised to find that the photocatalyst was not critical to the success of this reaction, 
and the product was still obtained even without the UDM photo catalyst. We performed some UV risk experiments of the study material, and we currently believe that the bromoquinoline acts as its own photo catalyst. This result is very interesting to us, and further studies into the mechanism of this reaction are underway in the Spouse lab. And now that we have accomplished the sequential CS translations to obtain the intermediate shown in the second row of this slide, we can advance that further to the eucophily natural product in four additional steps. These include the DMP oxidation of the alcohol to the aldehyde, Julia Koshensky olefination with tetrasol, protodebromination, and last demethylation reported by Landis and co-workers. Overall, this 16-step synthetic route currently represents the shortest asymmetric synthesis of eucophiline. Now that we have both the Western and Eastern fragments in hand, we can test our late-stage cross-coupling strategy. We initially investigated the one-part Miyara borrelation Suzuki coupling and found that the coupled product was obtained in only 24% yield. Attempts to further improve the yield proved unsuccessful, and the remainder mass balance turned out to be the Tiflate hydrolysis and protodiborylated products. Moving away from the Suzuki coupling reaction, we then explored the Staley coupling and found that the dimer was obtained in significantly better yield. Copper thiophene carboxylate reveals to be an important additive. In conjunction with palladium catalyst and NMP solvent, the dimer was obtained in 54% yield. With the dimer now in hand, we next probed the possibility of selectively reduce the enamine olefin via reductive amination type conditions. However, from these conditions, we exclusively observed the reduction of the vinyl group with no detectable amount of the over-reduced product. This result suggests that chemoselective olefin differentiation is not likely a viable approach. And so we decided to switch our dimer substrate to the formula version and by utilizing the previously optimized Staley coupling conditions, we were pleased to find that the condition is compatible with the aldehyde functional group and the formula dimer was isolated in 69% U. To our disappointment, we were still not able to identify a set of conditions to reduce the desired alkene. Our attempts include homogeneous heterogeneous transfer hydrogenations, hydroboration, reductive amination, hydrogen atom transfer, and dissolving metal reduction. All of this led to either complete recovery of study material or intractable complex mixture. At this stage, we came across a report by Amgen utilizing rhodium and bisphosphine ligand phenol directed hydrogenation, and we chose to subject our intermediate to these conditions. In order to access the required hydrogenation starting material, we first protected the aldehyde as the dioxalane, followed by demethylation to generate the phenol. Upon subjecting this phenol to the Amgen conditions, we were super excited to observe a clean reaction profile yielding the hydrogenated product in quantitative view and also as a single diastereomer. Finally, we performed the acetal cleavage followed by Peterson olefination to obtain the product with identical high resolution mass to that of the natural product. However, we did not get the exact match of our NMR spectra to those reported in the isolation paper. So we performed recrystallization to obtain single crystals suitable for X-ray analysis. The results from this analysis indicate that we, in fact, obtain an epimer of the natural product, with C16' prime having the opposite stereochemistry. Attempts to epimerize the center, unfortunately, were unsuccessful. We believe that further investigation of CSP3, CSP2 coupling strategies could ultimately correct this problem and provide access to this natural product, as well as other related heterodimeric based indoor colloids, and these are currently studies in the Stoltz lab. In summary, we have successfully developed a divergent convergence strategy to access an epimer of leucopholidine through the exploitation of palladium catalyzed enantioselective decarboxylative allylic alkylation. We first prepared enantio-enriched lactam building blocks in five steps. From this building block, we divergently prepare both the western and eastern portions of the molecule, then forge them together in a convergent fashion through a steely coupling reaction. Regarding the final stage, we perform acetal formation, demethylation, directed hydrogenation, acetal cleavage, and Peterson olefination to finally afford 16 prime epi leucophilidine. We were delighted to report our chemistry just a couple months ago in ACAE, and here's the reference in case you are interested in checking that out.
And last but not least, I would like to thank everyone in the Stokes group for creating such a welcoming and fun work environment. I also would like to especially acknowledge Professor Brian Stokes for his guidance throughout my graduate career. And I thank him for giving me opportunity to work on many cool chemistry. Again, thanks to my project partners, Dr. Chris Ryman, Kohei Hayashida, Daisuke Saito, and Katerina Korch for their contributions to the work I presented today. And last, I would like to thank you again, Matt, for organizing this really cool platform to share our work. Thanks everyone for tuning in on this episode of the Synthesis Workshop. If there's any question regarding the work I presented today, Chris and I would be more than happy to answer them through our email addresses included at the bottom of this slide. Thank you very much. Thank you for tuning in for this Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Fa for sharing your work with us. If you enjoyed the episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast. And feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.